enemies. Rise up, O Yahoo. Let thine enemies be scattered. Let them that hate thee flee from before thee. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise Yahuwah. Hallelujah. He teaches my hands to war so that a bow of steel is broken by mine arms. Hallelujah. He teaches my hands to war and my fingers to fight. Praise Yahuwah. Praise Yahuwah. I'd like to welcome everyone to Kodesh Nation and to our Nebaim study, prophet study. Praise Yahuwah. Brothers and sisters, we are about halfway through the Sefer of Yirmiyahu, the book of Jeremiah. Praise Yahuwah. We're going to be going through chapters 26 through 30 uh, today. Praise Yahuwah. We've already gone through Yeshiyahu, and we're continuing with this. And brothers and sisters, the, when we slow down, when we slow down and go through Yah's word, especially the Torah and the prophets, there's so much treasure to be unearthed. And that's why we're doing this. I mean, we've done this before as the Kodesh nation. We have uh, gone all the way through the Torah a couple times and all the way through the Nebaim, all the way through the prophets. And as a result of that, uh, our understanding has been opened on some things. We've, getting, we've gotten clarity. We've gotten understanding. You know, things that we didn't realize before, things that we didn't see before because of just how we've been taught in Christianity. Praise Yahuwah. So uh, this is a good thing. Now, I, I realize that there is some endurance when it comes to slowing down and studying the scriptures and taking more time with it. You know, I know that because I see that these, these prophet studies get uh, a lot less views than our Shabbat class. You know, Shabbat class, that uh, it's usually less than an hour. I usually just get stirred up and do some preaching in it, and we get a lot of views on those. Praise Yahuwah. We don't get as many views on these Nebaim studies. Praise Yahuwah. But I've, I've heard it said before that preaching to make you jump, but teaching to make you grow. Praise Yah. So I just want to encourage you all to just take the time to, to patiently go through this. Go through this. This will help build your foundation. Praise Yahuwah. So just uh, take your time. Go through this with us slowly. Take the time to listen to a video that may be an hour and a half long because I believe it will benefit you. I believe it will benefit you greatly. Hallelujah. Now, chapter 26 of Yirmiyahu, Jeremiah. The word reads, In the beginning of the reign of Jehoiakim, the son of Yoshiahu, the sovereign of Yehuda. This word came from Yahuwah, saying, Thus said Yahuwah, Stand in the courtyard of the house of Yahuwah, and speak to all the cities of Yahuda, which come to bow themselves in the house of Yahuwah. All the words that I command you to speak to them, do not diminish a word. If so be that they listen and each turn from his evil way, then I shall repent of the evil that I plan to do to them because of the evil of their deeds. And you shall say to them, Thus said Yahuwah, if you do not listen to me to walk in my Torah, which I put before you, to listen to the words of my servants, the Nebaim, I am sending you, even rising up early and sending them, though you have not listened, then I shall make this house like Shiloh and make this city a curse to all the nations of the earth. And the Kohanim and the Nebaim and all the people heard Yahu speaking these words in the house of Yahuwah. And it came to be when Yirmiyahu had ended speaking all that Yahuwah had commanded him to speak to all the people, that the Kohanim and the Nebaim and all the people seized him, saying, You shall certainly die. Why have you Nabu in the name of Yahuwah, saying, This house shall be like Shiloh, and this city be dried up without an inhabitant? And all the people were gathered together against Yirmiyahu in the house of Yahuwah. And the heads of Yahuda heard this, and they came up from the sovereign's house to the house of Yahuwah and sat down in the entrance of the new gate of the house of Yahuwah. And the Kohanim and the Nebaim spoke to the heads and all the people, saying, A death sentence for this man, for he has Nabu against this city, as you have heard with your ears. And Yirmiyahu spoke to all the heads and all the people, saying, Yahuwah sent me to Nabah, or prophesy, against this house and against this city with all the words you heard. 
And now make good your ways and your deeds and obey the voice of Yahuwah your Elohim. Then Yahuwah shall relent concerning the evil he has pronounced against you. And I, look, I am in your hand. Do with me as seems good and right to you. But know for certain that if you put me to death, you are bringing innocent blood on yourselves and on this city and on its inhabitants. For truly Yahuwah has sent me to you to speak all these words in your hearing. Now, let me stop here. Now this is very admirable uh, admirable of uh, Yirmiyahu that they had called the heads of uh, the nation, you know, the heads of the tribes and, you know, the, the officers, and they all got together. They said, okay, well, let's see what's going on here. Yirmiyahu, he didn't change one word of what he said. He stood behind his words because he knew it was the word of Yah. And so he, he stood, and he knew that it could have been a life or death situation because the Kohanim, the priests, the Nebaim, the prophets, they were calling for his execution. They were calling for his death because he had spoken these words against the city. Hallelujah. So let's look and see what happened. Verse 17, verse 16 rather. Then the heads and all the people said to the Kohanim and the Nebaim, No death sentence for this man, for he has spoken to us in the name of Yahuwah our Elohim. And some of the elders of the land rose up and spoke to all the assembly of the people, saying, Mikayah of Moresheth Nabu prophesied in the days of his Kiyahu, the sovereign of Yahuda, And he spoke to all the people of Yahuda, saying, Thus said Yahuwah of hosts, Sion shall become a plowed field, and Yerushalayim be heaps, in the mountain of the house, like the bare hills of the forest. Did his Kiahu, sovereign of Yahuda, and all Yahuda indeed put him to death? Did he not revere Yahuwah and seek the favor of Yahuwah? And the Adon relented concerning the evil which he had pronounced against them, but we are doing great evil against ourselves. There was, however, a man who Nabu, in the name of Yahuwah, Uriahu, the son of Shemayahu, of Kiriath Yerim, who Nabu against this city and against this land, according to all the words of Yermiyahu. And when Jehoiakim, the sovereign, with all his mighty men and all the heads, heard his words, the sovereign sought to put him to death. But Uriahu heard of it and was afraid and fled and went to Mitzrayim. Then Jehoiakim, the sovereign, sent men to Mitzrayim, El Nathan, the son of Achbor, and some men who went with him to Mitzrayim. And they brought Uriahu from Mitzrayim and brought him to Jehoiakim the sovereign, who smote him with the sword and threw his dead body into the graves of the common people. However, the hand of Achaikam, son of Shaphan, was with Yermiyahu, so as not to give him into the hand of the people to put him to death. Hallelujah. And so what took place here, brothers and sisters, is that Yah stood behind his word. Yah kept his promise with Yermiyahu. You all remember what Yah had said to Yermiyahu from the beginning? You remember what he promised him from the very beginning? If you don't, let's go there. Turn back to chapter 1 of Yermiyahu. We're going to see what Yah said to him at the very beginning. The beginning of his calling. Yerbiahu chapter 1, and we'll start in verse 4. It says, Now the word of Yahuwah came to me, saying, Before I formed you in the womb, I knew you, and before you came out of the womb, I kadosh you. I appointed you a nabi to nations. And I said, Ah, Adonai, Yahuwah, see, I do not know how to speak, for I am a youth. And Yahuwah said to me, Do not say I am a youth, but go to all to whom I send you and speak whatever I command you. Do not fear their faces, for I am with you to deliver you, declares Yahuwah. Then Yahuwah put forth his hand and touched my mouth, and Yahuwah said to me, See, I have put my words in your mouth. See, I have this day appointed you over the nations and over the reins to root out and to pull down and to destroy and to overthrow, to build and to plant. Praise Yahuwah. Praise Yah. And then let's jump down to verse 17. It says, Now gird up your loins and arise, and speak to them all that I command you. 
Do not break down before their faces, lest I break you before them. For look, I have made you this day a walled city and an iron column and bronzed walls against all the land, against the sovereigns of Yehuda, against her heads, against her Kohanim, and against the people of the land. And they shall fight against you, but not prevail against you. For I am with you, declares Yahuwah, to deliver you. So did we not see that here in chapter 26? I mean, this is a situation where he could have lost his life. He could have died. I mean, the Kohanim, the Nevi'im, they held a lot of pull, a lot of power, you know, in the government of our people. And they called the heads and Yah had, you know, touched the hearts of the heads and the elders and they didn't come in agreement with the Kohanim and the Nevi'im. They say, hey, let's, you know, let's not, let's not go against Yah here. Praise Yah, you know, let's let's take the example of his Kiahu. His Kiahu heard words just like this, but he humbled himself and he repented. Praise Yah. So Yah did exactly what he promised in chapter one for your Yahu here in chapter six. And so that's uh, reassurance even for us that if we stand for Yah, Yah will stand for us. We need not fear. Yah's not going to deliver. Yah's not going to allow us to be delivered into the hands of our enemies. And if he does, praise Yah, then, you know, he's still going to barack us. He's still going to help us. Praise Yah. Many are the afflictions of the righteous, but Yahuwah delivereth them out of them all. Sometimes he allows us to get in afflictions before he delivers us out of afflictions. We read, I believe it was in Tehillim, the Psalms, where it says that he, he'll allow our feet to be caught in the net, but then he'll deliver us out of the net. Mm-hmm. Remember we read about Kepha last week, Peter, and how he was, he was thrown in jail. That uh, Herod, you know, that he was getting overzealous. He had already killed uh, James, Yaakov. This was this was Yaakov, brother of Yochanan, James and John, the sons of thunder. He had already killed him, and that pleased the uh, the Yahudim. So he was getting ready to kill Kepha too. Praise Yah. So Yah let Kepha be put away. Now he let Kepha be put into prison, and then prayer went up without ceasing by the uh, the Kodeshim, and then Yah delivered him out of that situation. So it's not always that Yah just won't let you be caught and messed with at all by your enemies. Praise Yah. Sometimes he'll allow it to go to a certain point, but then he'll deliver you out. And see, we see this in the case of Yermiyahu. Praise Yah. Well, sometimes they did lay their hands on him. Sometimes they did, you know, put him in trying situations, but Yah delivered him out of them. Hallelujah. Now, chapter 27. In the beginning of the reign of Jehoiakim, son of Yoshiahu, the sovereign of Yehuda, this word came to Yermiah from Yahuwah, saying, This is what Yahuwah said to me, Make for yourselves bands and yokes, then you shall put them on your neck, and you shall send them to the sovereign of Edom, and the sovereign of Moab, and the sovereign of the Ammonites, and the sovereign of Sor, the sovereign of Sidon, and by the hand of the messengers who come to Jerusalem by Sidkiyahu, the sovereign of Yehuda. And you shall command them to say to their masters, Thus said Yahuwah of hosts, the Elohim of Yashra'al, Say this to your masters, I have made the earth and the man and the beast that are on the face of the earth by my great power and by my outstretched arm, and I shall give it to whom it seem right in my eyes. And now... I have given all these lands into the hand of Nebuchadnezzar, the sovereign of Abel, my servant. And the beast of the field, I have also given him to serve him. And all nations shall serve him and his son and his son's son until the time of his land comes. And then many nations and great sovereigns shall make him serve them. And it shall be the nation and reign that do not serve Nebuchadnezzar, the sovereign of Abel, the one that does not put its neck under the yoke of the sovereign of Babel, that nation I shall punish, declares Yahuwah, with the sword and the scarcity of food and the pestilence until I have consumed them by his hand. Praise Yahuwah. So let me stop here for a moment. We see that 
Yahuwah called Nebuchadnezzar his servant. Because we must remember that the king's heart is in the hand of Yahuwah like the rivers of water, and he turns it wheresoever he wills. Praise Yah. So Yah is in total control of what these world leaders do. Praise Yah. Donald Trump is Yahuwah's servant. A lot of people get mad as hell if they hear me say that. Praise Yahuwah. But he is. He is Yahuwah's servant. Praise Yahuwah. But you know what? Uh, a body over there in Iraq. He is Yahuwah's servant. Vladimir Putin over there in Russia. He is Yahuwah's servant. This that uh, uh, Kim Il-jong or whatever his name is over in North Korea. I mean, they've changed hands with the leadership. I may not have the right name. But the leader over in North Korea, all the evil that they're doing over there to their people and the oppression over there and, and just uh, how those people are, you know, they, they can't even have electricity all the time. They shut the electricity off at certain times and they got to be in the cold and the dark. At least that's what's told to us now. It may just be propaganda. They may be, they may be living just like us, <laughs> but they just, yeah, it may just be propaganda. But he is Yahuwah's servant. I don't care who you are. If you are a world leader, you are Yahuwah's servant. Because he makes you to do whatever his will is, even though you think you're doing your own will. Praise Yahuwah. Even Netanyahu over there in Israel with those who call themselves Jews. Praise Yahuwah. And are not. He is Yahuwah's servant. Praise Yahuwah. He is doing Yahuwah's bidding. He is doing what Yahuwah wants him to do. Leaders of the Palestinian uh, uh, organ organization, Palestinian Liberation Organization, they are doing exactly what Yah wants them to do. There's nothing that's out of Yah's hand or out of his control mm -hmm. when it comes to world events and world affairs. Praise Yahuwah. And so that's why that whoever's in office, that we as the people of Yah, we can't be like the world. We can't join in with all this bashing and all this negativity and all this tearing down. You better keep your mouth off of these leaders now, especially your leader, political leaders and whatnot. Now, if they're doing wickedness and whatnot, then yeah, I mean, we cry out against the wickedness. But I'm talking all this bashing, like all this Obama bashing that took place over the past eight years and whatnot. And, you know, we know we know he's not keeping Torah. We know he's not serving Yah. Praise Yah, but just the continual bashing. You see people who, who claim Torah observance, claim to be uh, following Yahusha, just joining in with it like the world. Mm -hmm. Praise Yah, that's not of Yah. You know, all this Trump bashing that's taking place now. That's right. Regardless of how you feel about him, that's not of Yah. People of Yah, people that follow the scriptures, we should not be joining in on that. Mm -hmm. Praise Yah. We should pray for him. Praise Yah. And the main thing that we should pray concerning our own world leaders is that they make decisions in such a way that will stay the wrath of Yah upon this country a little longer. We can't avert it altogether. I mean, it's going to come. Praise Yah. But we do want more space so that we can continue in the work of Yah. Praise Yahuwah. And just do as much of the work of Yah as we can. Uh, while things are peaceful, praise Yah. Because see, even, see, Nebuchadnezzar was evil. He was wicked, praise Yah, but he was called Yah's servant. And the, the children of Yahshua, all the children of Yahuda in captivity were told to pray for the city. Pray for Babylon. Pray for its peace. Because in its peace, you will have peace. Praise Yahuwah. And so we as a people that... You know, we need to pray for the peace of this land. Praise Yah. We know it's, we know it's not going to be ultimate peace now. We're not fooled. But pray for the peace of this land. Praise Yah. That, that we can just have a little more time to do what we need to do. Pray that Yah's judgment be stayed upon this nation. It is coming, but pray that it be stayed. Pray that we be given a little more of a space. Praise Yah. And then when it, when it comes, when it comes, it's going to come. There's nothing anybody can do about it. 
Raja. Because I'm going to tell you what, I mean, you know, Obama, when Obama was in office, he, he was accelerating Yah's hand of judgment, bringing all this, this uh, sodomite marriage and, and all that, and really pushing the sodomite agenda hard. I mean, he was really accelerating the hand of judgment. But now you got Trump in. Trump's talking about turning back Roe versus Wade, that court decision that allowed uh, abortions here in the United States. And now the Republicans are talking about turning that back and, and things like that. I mean, if, if they enact policies like that, that's actually a good thing because it'll slow things down when it comes to the judgment of Yah. And that's what we want. Praise Yahuwah. We want things to be slowed down because I'm going to tell you what. I mean, our nation of people, Yashra'al, we're not in good shape right now. We're not ready to face Yaakov's trouble right now. And that's why we should be praying just for a stay of Yah's judgment. Because there's a lot of people right now, a lot of our people right now, that if, Yah if Yaakov's trouble were to hit right now, they would not make it. They are not prepared. So let's just pray that we have more time to get ourselves and to get our people prepared. And if the government has something to do with it, policies that they enact and things that they do, praise Yahuwah, that gain Yah's favor, hey, so be it. I'm not speaking against them like that. Praise Yah. And like I said, I'm not saying we shouldn't cry out against sin. I mean, they're just flat out doing wickedness and putting forth wicked policies. Yeah, we should be preaching against that. But I'm just saying, in general, when it comes to uh, leaders and the leader of, of your own country that you're in, pray for pray for their peace. In their peace, you'll have peace. And let's not let's not join in with all this bashing, like I said, like they were doing with Obama last eight years, or like they're doing with Trump now. Let's let the world do that. Let the worldly people do that. But we know what the Scripture teaches, so we're not going to be fools. We're not going to get ourselves in trouble with the op. Hallelujah. So, as we go on, the word reads, verse 9, So do not listen to your Nebaim, or your diviners, or to your dreamers, or to your observers of clouds, or your sorcerers, who speak to you, saying, Do not serve the sovereign of Babel. For they prophesy falsehood to you to remove you far from your land, and I shall drive you out and you shall perish. But the nations that bring their necks under the yoke of the sovereign of Babel and serve him, I shall leave in their own land, declares Yahuwah, and they shall till it and dwell in it. And I spoke to Sidkiah, the sovereign of Yahuda, according to all these words, saying, Bring your necks under the yoke of the sovereign of Babel and serve him and his people and live. Why should you die, you and your people, by the sword, by the scarcity of food, and by the pestilence, as Yahuwah has spoken against the nation that does not serve the sovereign of Babel? Do not listen to the words of the Nebaim who speak to you, saying, Do not serve the sovereign of Babel, for they prophesy falsehood to you. For I have not sent them, declares Yahuwah. Yet they prophesy falsehood in my name, in order that I drive you out then you shall perish, you and the Nebaim who Naba to you. Verse 16. Then I spoke to the Kohanim and to all this people, saying, Thus said Yahuwah, Do not listen to the words of your Nebaim who prophesied to you, saying, See, the vessels of the house of Yahuwah are brought back from Babel soon now, for they prophesy falsehood to you. Do not listen to them. Serve the sovereign of Babel and live. Why should this city become a ruin? So let me stop here. So this tells us, brothers and sisters, that doing the will of Yah, uh, a lot of times it's going to run contrary to our will. And a lot of times it's going to run contrary to just how we think things should be. What we think things should be like. Praise Yahweh. Here, Yah is saying, this heathen king now, Yah is saying, serve him. Serve him. Serve his people. Pray for the peace of that city. These are heathens now. But Yah told them. Yah told them to do that. And see, uh, I I gave a message not too long back. It may have been a couple of years ago even. But it talks about our conduct in captivity. It, it's actually in the, um, the talk shoe archives, the audio archives 
that uh, you can access that with the link down below in the description section. But it talks about our conduct in captivity, how we as Israelites should be conducting ourselves in the land of our captivity. See, this is why we got to follow the will of Yah. We can't follow the crowds. Torah says not to follow a multitude to do evil. We should not have the same outlook on politics that worldly people do. Now, I'm not saying we, you know, we're to get involved in politics and vote and, and pick sides and all that stuff. I'm not saying that. Praise Yah. We don't want to entangle ourselves in the affairs of this world. We may please him who's called us to be a soldier. But at the same time, we should not have the same political outlook as worldly people do. We should not have uh, we should not have the same outlook when it comes to racial matters. This is very important. This is very important as far as when it comes to racial matters. You look at worldly Hebrews now, worldly quote unquote black folk, and just the the typical narrative that has been fed to them through the media and, and through society. And so what they believe and what they, you know, what comes out of their mouth and out of their spirit and the things they talk about and just their, their racial perspective. We should not be conformed to that. Ours should be different. We should have a kingdom perspective. Even when it comes to matters of race, we should bring in that perspective when we deal with that. We shouldn't always you should just be joining in, join in on the protests and join in on the marches and join in on this, this discussion and that discussion and have your typical um, African-American um, perspective or view on things. We should be bringing the view of, of, of the kingdom, the view of the scriptures Praise Yahuwah, and, and be able to interpret events that affect our people in light of the curses. Praise Yah, and I'm going to tell you something. That will not make you popular. You go to these conferences with these conscious folk and whatnot, and folks that are into the civil rights and all of that, you come talking about the curses, you come talking about God is the one that's bringing these things upon us, you won't be popular. But you will be popular if you brush that aside and you just go with their flow, talk their talk, walk their walk, do what they do. You'll be popular. You'll be able to spread the umbrella. You'll be able to gather more people around you and more people are like you and you'll be able to blend in with the with that crowd of people but i'm going to tell you y'all won't be pleased praise y'all we are called to be the salt of the earth but see if the salt has lost its savor wherewith shall it be seasoned it's good for nothing but to be thrown on the dunghill and to be trampled under foot Praise Yah. So we should be among people like that, brothers and sisters. And for us to have an effect on them, not for them to have an effect on us. Praise Yahuwah. Especially them being unawakened to the, the scriptural truth. Praise Yah. That we should be able to go amongst them and then come back and we're the same as we were. We had the same uh, perspective. And I'm not saying we can't learn anything from anybody because, I mean, there are things that there are things that we can can learn from others. But when it comes to uh, being on a spiritual level, praise Yahuwah, that Pan-African, Egyptologists, people like that have nothing to teach you and nothing to teach us when it comes to dealing with things on, on a spiritual level. Now, they may have information. They have great information. Data, statistics, things that are going on, things that, that our, our, our people are experiencing and what they're doing to our people. They have great information when it comes to things like that. But as far as spiritual instruction, they have nothing to say to us. Praise Yahuwah. Because they, they advocate the serving other, other mighty ones. And that's the very thing that got us brought here in the boats in the first place. Praise Yahuwah is forsaking Yahuwah, going after the mighty ones of the nations around us. That's why we're here. 
That's why we're in the land of our captivity, in the land of our enemies. That is why we're here. So that'd be foolish for us to get amongst them. And all of a sudden we want to take on their practices, take on their ways and whatnot. All of a sudden we want to, you know, we want to find our third eye and stuff like that. Mixing up with these pan-African Egyptology folks. Mm -hmm. Praise Yahuwah. It should not be that way, brothers and sisters. We should be affecting them, not them affecting us. If we are the salt of the earth. Mm -hmm. Like Yahushua said. Praise Yahuwah. See, sometimes Yah will try you. Mm -hmm. He will try you. He will put you in situations. And around people, they are not where you are. Praise Jehovah spiritually and in certain areas. But He'll put you in their life to see if you will be the salt of the earth or if you will compromise. To see if you will let Him use you to bring this person up in some areas or if you will be dragged down to where they are in certain areas. Y'all's watching. The eyes of Yahuwah are in every place beholding the evil and the good. Yep. That's why we can't let the salt lose its savor. Praise Yahuwah. Because Yah puts us around certain people to help certain people. Help bring them up. Not for them to bring us to where they are. Praise Yahuwah. Let's continue. Now, verse 18. Now, you're me, I, who just got, got through telling the leaders, don't listen to these false prophets. They're just telling you what you want to hear. Telling you within a couple of years, all the vessels of the house of Yah are going to be brought back and it's going to turn the captivity of the people. Of course, they wanted to hear that. Praise Yah, but you're me, I, who's saying, don't listen to them. They're false. They speak falsehood to you. Now, verse 18. But if they are Nebaim, Prophets. And if the word of Yahuwah is with them, let them now make intercession to Yahuwah of hosts that the vessels which are left in the house of Yahuwah and in the house of the sovereign of Yehuda and at Jerusalem not go to Babel. For thus said Yahuwah of hosts concerning the columns and concerning the sea and concerning the stands and concerning the remainder of the vessels which are left in this city, which Nebuchadnezzar, the sovereign of Babel, did not take when he exiled Yaconiah, the son of Jehoiakim, the sovereign of Yehuda, from Jerusalem to Babel, and all the nobles of Yehuda and Jerusalem. Thus said Yahuwah of hosts, the Elohim of Yashra'al, concerning the vessels that remain in the house of Yahuwah and in the house of the sovereign of Yehuda and Jerusalem, they shall be brought to Babel and be there until the day that I visit them, declares Yahuwah. Then I shall bring them back and restore them to this place. So, brothers and sisters, that was a good test that was brought forth. The, you know, if these prophets are real, all right, let them intercede. Let them intercede that the, the vessels in, in the house of Yah are not going to be taken to Babel. We'll see what happens. We'll see if they're of Yah or not. Praise Yahuwah. We can even say today, all these false prophets running around talking about revival. Right? Oh, there's going to be a mighty revival. Yah's not going to judge this nation. It's going to be revival. It's going to be turned back to the Lord. Praise Yah. Okay, if y'all are true prophets then, praise Yah, then, then why don't you all intercede that this place not be judged then? Praise Yah, that we not be invaded by enemy forces, no nuclear bombs drop on this land. Y'all go ahead and pray. Pray that that not happen. And then we'll see what takes place. And so when all these, all these things do take place, folks will know you're false. Mm -hmm. Praise Yah. And folks will know you're erring from the word of Yah. Because the word of Yah is very clear on this. That this nation, or this country, and all countries, really, I'm not just picking on the United States, but the hand of judgment is going to be heavy, very heavy, on this country and on all countries very soon. Praise Yah. Yah is getting ready to shake this world up. Because his true sons and daughters are getting ready to come forth. Mm -hmm. Praise Yahuwah. And see, uh, what's really crazy about that is, you know, when I was in the churches, and people would, there are people who have somewhat of a recognition of this, but they want to turn it into a church thing. They want to say, he's going to manifest the church before the world. Praise Yah. 
and you know, and, and they're not speaking anything about Yahshua Al or Yahuda because they don't understand the blueprint. They don't understand that Yah's plan of salvation from start to finish, he already laid it out in the Torah and the Nevi'im. See, what we're doing right now, see, the, the outline has already been made. The outline, the picture, all we're doing right now is we're coloring it in. Just coloring it in until it's complete. <coughs> Praise Yahuwah. But see, what Christianity has done is scrapped that outline and made an outline of their own. Mm -hmm. And they're coloring that in. Praise Yah, and that's going to come to naught. Because except Yahuwah build the house, they labor in vain who build it. Praise Yahuwah. So unless you're building this house, unless you're, unless you're seeking to build up the house of Yahshua all and the house of Yahuda, what you're seeking to build up is going to come to naught. Praise Yah. Praise Yahuwah. All right, chapter 28. And it came to be in the year at the beginning of the reign of Sidkiah, sovereign of Yehuda, in the fourth year, in the fifth month, that Hananiah, the son of Azur, the Nabi, who was from Gibbon, spoke to me in the house of Yahuwah in the presence of the Kohanim and of all the people, saying, Thus spoke Yahuwah of hosts, the Elohim of Yashra'al, saying, I have broken the yoke of the sovereign of Abel. Within two years I am going to bring back to this place all the vessels of the house of Yahuwah that Nebuchadnezzar, Sovereign of Babel removed from this place and took to Babel. And I am going to bring back to this place Yakonyah, son of Jehoiakim, sovereign of Yehuda, with all the exiles of Yehuda who went to Babel, declares Yahuwah. For I am going to break the yoke of the sovereign of Babel. Then the Nabi Yirmiyah spoke to the Nabi Hananiah in the presence of the Kohanim and in the presence of all the people who stood in the house of Yahuwah. And the Nabi Yirmiyah said, O man, Yahuwah do so. Yahuwah establish your words which you have prophesied to bring back the vessels of the house of Yahuwah and all the exiles from Babel to this place. Only hear now the word that I speak in your hearing and in the hearing of all the people. The Nebaim who have been before me and before you of old Nabu against many lands and great rains of battle and of evil and of pestilence. The Nabi who Naba of peace when the word of the Nabi comes to pass that Nabi is known as one whom Yahuwah has truly sent. And Hananiah the Nabi took the yoke off the Nabi Yirmiyah's neck and broke it. And Hananiah spoke in the presence of all the people saying, Thus said Yahuwah, so shall I break the yoke of Nebuchadnezzar, sovereign of Babel, from the neck of all nations within two years. And the Nabi Yirmiyah went his way. And the word of Yahuwah came to Yirmiyah after Hananiah the Nabi had broken the yoke from the neck of the Nabi Yirmiyah, saying, Go and speak to Hananiah, saying, Thus said Yahuwah, you have broken the yokes of wood, but you shall make yokes of iron instead. For thus said Yahuwah of hosts, the Elohim of Yashra, all I have put a yoke of iron on the neck of all these nations to serve Nebuchadnezzar, sovereign of Babel, and they shall serve him, and I have also given him the beasts of the field. And the Nabi Yirmiyah said to Hananiah the Nabi, Listen, please, Hananiah, Yahuwah has not sent you, but you have made this people trust in falsehood. Therefore, thus said Yahuwah, See, I am sending you away from the face of the earth. This year you shall die, for you have spoken apostasy against Yahuwah. And Hananiah the Nabi died the same year in the seventh month. Those are words you never want to hear, is that... Uh, Thus said Yahuwah, see, I'm sending you away from the face of the earth. It's a nice way of saying, I'm going to kill you. False prophet now. Prophesying about, oh, in two years, Yah's going to bring, he's going to bring the vessels back, bring the people back. And, and Yah said that he made the people to trust in a lie. That, that's what's so evil about false prophets. They make people to trust in a lie, and they do not turn people back from their sins. See, when I was in Christianity, I was around groups like that. I was around groups that had schools. You know, they had a school of the prophets. They teach you how to be a prophet, teach you how to prophesy. And you look at, you look at students of this school, 
and how they would get up and they would do their little prophesy routine. They, oh, hey, you, you out there in the green shirt, yes, yeah, stand up, yeah, listen, um, God has a message for you, and this and that. And, and it, it was always something positive, always something fluffy, always something feel good, make you feel warm inside. Hardly ever any reproof or rebuke. Praise Yah. When I see the Nebaim of old, I see them crying out against sin. I see them turning Yah's people back to Him, back to Torah, back to the commandments, statutes, and judgments of the Most High. Praise Yahuwah. But this prophesying that's taken place in modern America, brothers and sisters, it amounts to nothing more than fortune telling. Because that's exactly what people hear when they go to fortune tellers. You just you hear something personal about yourself that's usually positive, usually fluffy, usually something you want to hear. Because those fortune tellers know that if they tell you what you want to hear, you're going to come back and you're going to keep spending your money. You ever see at the side of the road, you'll see a building, it'll say psychic, or it'll have a big hand, say palm reader, and whatnot. See, you have to understand, if you have a business, it takes money to keep those buildings going, keep the lights on. And when you see them year after year after year after year, you know what that means? It means they're successful in their business. Praise God. They're not shutting the doors. You don't see no plywood up and all that and bars on the and all that. Uh-uh, no. I mean, they are continuing to operate year after year. Why? Because people keep coming back and spending money with them because they're telling people what they want to hear. And that's exactly how false prophets operate because the end game for the, for the false prophet is personal gain. False prophets personally gain from telling people what they want to hear and making people trust in a lie. That in America, that is proven to be financially rewarding when you do that. Praise Yahuwah. That has proven to garner men uh, new cars, private jets, boats. There's even a prosperity preacher that, that boasted about Yah was going to barack him with so much money, he's going to buy him a space shuttle. Praise Yah. I'm going to tell you what, I mean, you, you know, it's, it, and the, the man probably brings in enough money, he could probably get him a space shuttle. And so he can get in that space shuttle, and he can shuttle himself out into the sky, praise Yah, thinking he's going to get see something like Star Trek, you know, all these planets and all that stuff, and he's going to go funk when he hits that firmament. <laughs> and if you don't understand what I'm talking about, then you go down into my, my playlist, and you play that playlist that, that talks about that do the scriptures teach a flat domed earth. Go through every one of those videos if you're not familiar with what I'm talking about, but that's exactly what that preacher would do if he got him a space shuttle. <clears throat> he wouldn't go any further. Because that's what the scripture teaches. Praise Yahuwah. But anyway, um, see, this is part of the reason why false prophets proliferate in this society because we don't see swift judgment like Hananiah here. We don't see just false prophets dropping dead left and right. Because if they did, there wouldn't be as many false prophets. People would fear. But see, Yah's just rearing back and he's letting this stuff go on before he brings up before he brings down the hammer of judgment. You see, because sentence on an evil work is not executed speedily. Therefore, the hearts of the sons of men are fully set in them to do evil. Hallelujah. Chapter 29. And these words, and these are the words of the letter which Yermiah the Nabi sent from Yerushalayim to the rest of the elders of the exile, and to the Kohanim, and to the Nebaim, and to all the people whom Nebuchadnezzar had exiled from Yerushalayim to Babel. After Yekoniah the sovereign, and the sovereignist mother and the eunuchs and the heads of Yehuda and Yerushalayim and the craftsmen and the smiths had gone from Yerushalayim by the hand of Elasa, the son of Shaphan, and Gamariah, the son of Hilkiah, whom Sidkiah, sovereign of Yehuda, sent to Babel, to Nebuchadnezzar, the sovereign of Babel, saying, 
Thus said Yahuwah of hosts, the Elohim of Yashra'al, to all the exiles whom I exiled from Yerushalayim to Babel, build houses and dwell and plant gardens and eat their fruit. Take wives and bring forth sons and daughters and take wives for your sons and give your daughters to husbands and let them bear sons and daughters and be increased and there not be and, and be increased there and not diminished and seek the peace of the city where I have exiled you and pray to Yahuwah for it for in its peace you have peace. Praise Yahuwah. So remember what I talked about earlier. This was instruction to the exiles. This is how they were to conduct themselves in captivity. They weren't to go over there fighting for their rights. They weren't to go over there marching, protesting, cursing the leader over there. No! You go over there and you, you serve the people. Praise Yah. You seek the peace of the city. You pray for this city. This is how they were to conduct themselves. Praise Yahuwah. And wouldn't that, wouldn't that be sad that, that here you are at some Black Lives Matter rally. And here you are protesting and shouting and all that. And here you, you, you get killed. You die. And that's how you go out. Praise Yah. Rather than going out for the work of the kingdom. Rather than going out for the good news. For the work of Yah. You know, you end up, you, you end up uh, uh, being a martyr for some, some worldly cause. Like that. Praise Yahuwah. Praise Yah. We're not getting get mixed up in all that stuff. And see, this whole this whole Black Lives Matter thing, praise Yahuwah, you'd be surprised how much white money is behind Black Lives Matter. It's another one of these these uh, uh, political movements to manipulate our people with stuff that's not for the good of our people. Praise Yah. The reason why a lot of uh, Hebrew women ended up being feminists and whatnot is because they got caught up in a, a movement that was being spearheaded by Gentile women. A movement that didn't even benefit them, praise Yahuwah, as much as it benefited those who got the movement started in the first place. <laughs> See, this is part of what Yah is talking about when he said, my people have been lost sheep. They have gone from mountain to hill and they have forgotten their resting place. When we're chasing after uh, black feminism, chasing after black lives matter, just chasing after all this stuff, Democratic Party, Republican Party, conservatism, liberalism, that's running from mountain to hill, mountain to hill, forgetting our resting place, forgetting those green pastures of Torah, Praise Yahuwah. And running after all these worldly causes. we got to be a separated people. Brothers and sisters, we've got to be salt and light. Hallelujah. Now, one more point I want to make before going on. Interesting, it talks about, you know, give your daughters to husbands. But it also says, take wives for your sons. Praise Yah. Even in our house, you know, we've talked much about, you know, just that... Uh, uh, Giving our giving our daughters to the right men, you know, finding the right men to give our daughters to. You know, it also talks about taking wives for your sons. Praise Yah. So what that what that tells me is that they didn't necessarily just send their sons out and hey, whatever you bring home, you know, it's all right. Uh uh. Sometimes they took wives for their sons. See, that's legitimate too. Not just to give your daughters to husbands. Praise God, but to take wives for your sons. Right. Hallelujah. And see, it, you know, our forefathers did that because they had the wisdom to know who would be a good mate yes. for, their, for their daughters, for their sons, and whatnot. See, even myself, now I was, you know, I, I was seeking Yah, trying to serve Yah. And this was about 25 years ago. I was about 21 years old. But I, I did not know what was good for me back then. I wanted to be married. I wanted a wife someday. But if I would have gotten the kind of wife I was looking for back when I was 21 years old, and th this is after I had turned to Yah now. This is after I left the drinking, partying, fraternity, uh, Johnny All-American football lifestyle, after I left all that stuff. And, and, and I, I turned back to Yah through Christianity now. That was my stepping stone. Got into Bible studies, got into prayer meetings, started separating myself 
from the world and started moving towards Yah. But even at that point in time in my life, I had a certain mindset. I had a certain view of just what I wanted in a life. If I would have gotten that back then, I'd be in a world of hurt today. I didn't know it was good for me. Praise Yahuwah. See, delight yourself also in Yahuwah, and he shall give you the desires of your heart. You see, that used to be confusing back then. Praise Yah, because it was confusing to me back then because the desires of my heart weren't good. Yah had to do some changing. He had to do some molding, some shaping. He had to work some things out of my mind, work some things into my mind. He had to help me get my mind right. Praise Yahuwah. So that, so that the desires of my heart were His desires as well. And that's when He gave me the desires of my heart as I delighted myself in Him, when my desires became right. Hallelujah. So taking wives for sons. That's legitimate too. Hallelujah. Verse 8. For thus said Yahuwah of hosts, the Elohim of Yashra'al, Let not your Nevi'im and your diviners who are in your midst deceive you. Neither listen to, their, to the dreams which they are dreaming, which you are dreaming. For they are prophesying falsely to you in my name, I have not sent them, declares Yahuwah. For thus said Yahuwah, when seventy years are completed at Babel, I shall visit you and establish my good word toward you to bring you back to this place. For I know the plans I am planning for you, declares Yahuwah, plans of peace and not of evil, to give you an expectancy and a latter end. Then you shall call on me and shall come and pray to me, and I shall listen to you. And you shall seek and find me when you search for me with all your heart. And I shall be found by you, declares Yahuwah. And I shall turn back your captivity and shall gather you from all the Gentiles and from all the places where I have driven you, declares Yahuwah. And I shall bring you back to the place from which I have exiled you. Praise Yahuwah. So this is Yah's promise. To them, if they are to be obedient, willing and obedient, they would eat the good of the land. Now, he said, and you shall seek and find me when you search for me with all your heart. Do you know that that's what Yah is looking for today in the land of our captivity? That's what Yah is waiting for, for the nation of Yashra'al and Yahuda. Praise Yahuwah, because all Yah was doing was bringing them back to Devarim chapter 4. Praise Yah. In fact, let's go back there. I want to read the original promise that Yah gave, and then see, and then we'll see how it applied to them. We we see how it applied to them through what we read, but we'll see how it applies to us in captivity today, in the land of captivity. Some people get touchy about that. They say you're not in captivity; you're free to go, you know, uh, wherever you want to go. But we are in the land of our captivity. Let me clarify that. Praise Yah. We're in the land of our captivity. And even though we are free to come and go, we can go to any country and go here and there. We are not free to return to our original land as a nation. That's one thing we're not free to do. Praise Yah. So that, that still technically puts us in a state of captivity. Praise Yahuwah, because we're in the land of our captivity and we have not been we have not been given the green light to return yet. All right, Devarim chapter 4, verse Deuteronomy 4, verse 27 says, And Yahuwah shall scatter you among the peoples, and you shall be left few in number among the Gentiles where Yahuwah drives you. And there you shall serve mighty ones, the work of men's hands, wood and stone, which neither see nor hear nor eat nor smell. But from there you shall seek Yahuwah your Elohim, and shall find when you search for him with all your heart and with all your being in your distress. When all these words come upon you in the latter days, then you shall return to Yahuwah your Elohim and obey his voice. So there it is again. The, if from there you shall seek Yahuwah your Elohim and shall find when you search for him with all your heart and all your being. That is what we should be concentrating on doing in this day and time, brothers and sisters. Searching for Yahuwah with all of our heart and all of our being. Praise Yahuwah. Proverbs 2 talks about just seeking his wisdom, his knowledge, his understanding. Seeking it like gold, precious rubies. 
praise Yahweh, are making it that important to you to find the will of Yah in your life. Praise Yahuwah. That's how diligently we need to be seeking Him and seeking His will. And that will hasten our redemption as a nation of people, brothers and sisters. Praise Yahuwah. See, sometimes we haven't found the will of Yah uh, in our lives because we don't want to find the will of Yah. Praise Yahuwah. There are some things that are just plain black and white in front of your face which are the will of Yah in your life. But then there are some things that are not so plain. And Yah purposefully makes certain things not so plain. Praise Yahuwah. Not spelled out in black and white. Just to see what you will do. Just to see what we will do. Praise Yah. The, the, will you stop at his just plain black and white revealed will? You know, and you see he doesn't speak against a certain thing just in plain black and white. So you just run with that. Oh, I'm going to do it. I'm going to do it. Oh, nothing to tore against it. I'm going to do it. Praise Yahweh. That's a lustful, compromising heart. Praise Yahweh. And, and you know how you know that? Because a person like that, they're not, they're not seeking Yah further because they don't want to. Praise Yahweh. But the thing is, I mean, there are some things that, that we need to dig deeper on. And I'll be bringing out a lesson about this, brothers and sisters, praise Yahuwah, that sometimes his will, his complete will may not be revealed in the precepts, but in the principles. See, there are some principles that come with the precepts, praise Yahuwah. Things may not be spelled out in black and white, but he gives enough principles in the scripture to guide you to a right judgment concerning matters. Praise Yah. And see, this was part of the purpose of Yahusha coming. Because remember now, he, he is the light. Praise Yah. The light that lightens our darkness. Yahshua all and Yahuda were in darkness, you know, when he came, even though they had the Torah. Now, praise Yah. That what happens is that when you have what I will call gaps in the Torah, now they're not really gaps, you know, in, in the truest sense, but they're gaps to us in our human understanding. But these gaps in the Torah, these areas where Yah doesn't clearly spell out his will in black and white. He doesn't just spoon feed you like a little baby with some Gerbers. Praise Yahuwah. That you actually have to dig, you actually have to search, you actually have to pray fast. And praise Yahuwah. That, that you actually have to work in order to find his will. Praise Yah. Yah does that for a purpose. But what happens is carnal, sensual men, they exploit those gaps. They exploit those gaps in order to fulfill, fulfill their carnal, sensual lusts. Praise Yah. And, and, and try to feel like they're in the will of Yah. And see, that's what was happening in Yahushua's time. The, the, the Pharisees and scribes, they called themselves filling in the gaps, quote unquote, with their traditions of men and traditions of the elders. And what they ended up doing was making the word of Yah of none effect through their tradition. Praise Yah. And see, that's something that we don't want to make that same mistake of, of uh, exploiting the gaps. Praise Yah. That just because something's not spelled out in black and white, that we want to justify every worldly practice out there. Praise Yah. And just, oh, it doesn't specifically say in Torah, it doesn't specifically say in Torah. But you know what? If you seek Yah, if you seek His principles out, you will find by putting His principles together, praise Yah, that the answers are clearer than what you think. So we don't want to play games with this kind of thing because this is where people are going to miss it in the last days, according to Yahusha. This is going to be the dividing line between the broad road and the narrow road. Praise Yah. This is going to be what's going to cause a lot of people to miss it and be surprised. Master, Master, did we not prophesy in your name? In your name cast out devils. And in your name do many wonderful works. He's going to say, depart from me, you workers of iniquity, you violators of the Torah. I never knew you. Praise Yahuwah. Now, when he says you violators of the Torah, it may not have been necessarily people just doing blatant things like killing, stealing, praise Yahuwah, coveting. But maybe they were not Kodesh in all manner of conversation. Maybe they were not loving Yahuwah with all of their heart, all of their mind, all of their being 
and they thought they'd exploit those gaps, and Yah had their number. Now, verse 15. Because you have said, Yahuwah has raised up Nebaim for us in Babel, thus said Yahuwah concerning the sovereign who sits on the throne of Daud, concerning all the people who dwell in this city, and concerning your brothers who have not gone out with you into exile. Thus said Yahuwah of hosts, See, I am sending on them the sword, the scarcity of food, and the pestilence, and I shall make them like spoiled pigs, so spoiled as to be inevitable. And I shall pursue them with the sword, with scarcity of food, and with pestilence, and I shall make them a horror among all the reigns of the earth, to be a curse and an astonishment and a hissing and a reproach among all the Gentiles where I have driven them. For they did not heed my words, declares Yahuwah, which I sent to them by my servants, the Nebaim, rising up early and sending them. Yet you did not listen, declares Yahuwah. You therefore hear the word of Yahuwah, all you exiles whom I have sent from Jerusalem to Babel. Thus said, thus said Yahuwah of hosts, the Elohim of Yashra'al, concerning Ahab, the son of Koliah, and Sidkiyahu, the son of Maasiah, who are prophesying falsely to you in my name. See, I am giving them into the hand of Nebuchadnezzar, sovereign of Babel, and he shall smite them before your eyes. And because of them, all the exiles of Yehuda are in, who are in Babel shall use a curse, saying, Yahuwah make you like Sidkiyahu and Ahab, whom the sovereign of Babel roasted in the fire. Because they have done wickedness in Yashra'al and committed adultery with their neighbor's wives and have spoken a word in my name falsely, which I have not commanded them. And I am he who knows in a witness, declares Yahuwah. So let me stop here for a moment. So that's what's interesting is what is usually the case is that false prophets are prisoners of their own lusts. That Yahuda even spoke of this. Jude, you know, in the Brit Kadashah, talking about how... The, these uh, these men were just uh, had eyes full of adultery, just just overtaken with lust. Praise Yah, and you know that's uh, that that's usually the case, like with false prophets, especially like if they have a commune of some sort. You've heard many cases of uh, leaders of communes and how they would have so much power. And be so highly regarded by the people, they could just do anything they wanted to do. No accountability, no eldership. And here, you, here it comes out that they're with, they're with all these little girls, all these young girls, and with other men's wives, and just running wild. And it's, it was like that in Yahoo's day, that these false prophets were prisoners of their own lusts. Verse 24. And speak to Shema Yahu the Nechelamite, saying, Thus speaks Yahuwah of hosts, the Elohim of Yashra'al, saying, Because you have sent letters in your name to all the people who are at Jerusalem, to Sephaniah, the son of Maasiah, the Kohen, and to all the Kohanim, saying, Yahuwah has made you Kohen instead of Yahuyada, the Kohen, so that there are overseers in the house of Yahuwah over everyone who is mad and makes himself a Nabi, that you should put him in the stocks and in the iron collar. So why have you not reproved Yirmiyahu of Anathoth, who makes himself a Navi to you? For he has sent to us in Babel, saying, This is long. Build houses and dwell and plant gardens and eat their fruit. And Sephaniah the Kohen read this letter in the hearing of Yirmiyahu the Navi. Then the word of Yahuwah came to Yirmiyahu, saying, Send to all those in exile, saying, Thus said Yahuwah concerning Shemaiah the Nechelamite, because Shemaiah has prophesied to you, and I have not sent him, and he has made you to trust on falsehood. Therefore, thus said Yahuwah, See, I am bringing punishment upon Shemaiah the Nechelamite and his seed, and he shall have no one to dwell among this people, nor is he to see the good that I am about to do for my people, declares Yahuwah, because he has spoken apostasy against Yahuwah. Hallelujah. So we see Yahweh wouldn't plan when it came to these false prophets. Yah brought judgment upon these men just like he's going to do in our day and time. Brothers and sisters, praise Yahuwah. But in chapter 30, this is the final chapter of this particular study. The word reads, the word that came... 
to Yirmiyahu from Yahuwah, saying, Thus spoke Yahuwah Elohim of Yashra'al, saying, Write in a book for yourself all the words that I have spoken to you. For look, the days are coming, declares Yahuwah, when I shall turn back the captivity of my people Yashra'al and Yahuda, declares Yahuwah, and I shall bring them back to the land that I gave to their fathers and let them possess it. And these are the words Yahuwah spoke concerning Yashra'al and Yahuda. For this is what Yahuwah said, We have heard a voice of trembling, of fear, and not of peace. Ask now and see if a man is giving birth. Why do I see every man with his hands on his loins like a woman in labor and all faces turn pale? Oh, for great is that day. There is none like it. And it is the time of Yaakov's distress, but he shall be saved out of it. And it shall be in that day, declares Yahuwah of hosts, that I break his yoke from your net and tear off your bonds and foreigners no more enslave them. And they shall serve Yahuwah their Elohim and Daud their sovereign, whom I raise up for them. Hallelujah. So it's talking about Yaakov's trouble, the time of Yaakov's distress. And great is that day, for there's none like it. Didn't Yahusha say the same thing? Say that it'll be a time such as has never been before and no, no nor shall ever be. It said, but he shall be saved out of it. I'm going to tell you what, in Yaakov's distress, you better find Yaakov and Yahuda, the righteous ones, and, and attach yourselves to them. Because it said, and he shall be saved out of it. Hallelujah. And so that's why we need to be what, what, working righteousness, brothers and sisters, so we could be saved out of this evil day. For whosoever shall call upon the name of Yahuwah shall be delivered shall be saved. Praise Yahuwah. Hallelujah. Now verse 8, And it shall be in that day, declares Yahuwah of hosts, that I break his yoke from your neck and tear off your bonds and foreigners. No more enslave them. Let me jump to verse 10 because we already read that. And you do not fear, O, Yah o, o Yaakov, my servant, declares Yahuwah, nor be discouraged, O Yashra'al. For look, I am saving you from afar and your seed from the land of their captivity. And Yaakov shall return and have rest and be at ease with no one to trouble him. For I am with you, declares Yahuwah, to save you, though I make a complete end of all Gentiles where I have scattered you. Yet I do not make a complete end of you, but I shall reprove you in judgment and by no means leave you unpunished. Let me stop here. And so it said, foreigners no more enslave them. Who, who's still being enslaved to this day? Worldwide. Praise Yahuwah. It's not the Israelis. And so that's why we've got to ask ourselves questions like that when we see clues in the scriptures. Where that when Yashra'al and Yahuda are saved out of Yaakov's distress, that in some places they're going to be in physical bondage to the other nations. Slavery. So who's still experiencing slavery? What nation of people is still experiencing slavery? I know here in the United States, you've heard me say before that, that we as the children of Yashra'al and the children of Yahuda are suffering the curses, but we're suffering the country club curses. Praise God. Because believe it or not, I mean, we have brothers and sisters worldwide that are suffering a lot worse than we are. You know, in South America, where the... If you turn if you turn the clock back about 70 years, that that's what it's like in South America right now as far as like civil rights and the way people are treated over there and racism and discrimination and that's what it's like in these South American countries as far as how our people are treated. And there are places, you know, in the Muslim world where our people are still in physical captivity, still actually being enslaved by the Arabs. This is to this day now. Praise Yah. For thus said Yahuwah, your breach is incurable, your wound is grievous. No one pleads your cause to bind up. There are no healing medicines for you. All those loving you have forgotten you. They do not seek you, for I smote you as an enemy smites with cruel chastisement, because your wickedness is great, your sins have increased. Why do you cry about your breach? Your pain is incurable because of your many wickednesses, because your sins have increased, I have done this to you. However, all those who devour you shall be devoured, and all your adversaries, every one of them, shall go into captivity, and those who exploit you shall be exploited, 
and all who prey upon you, I shall make a prey. For I restore health to you and heal your wounds, declares Yahuwah. For they have called you an outcast, saying, This is Sion, no one is seeking her. So once again, praise Yahuwah. Who has adversaries? Who has gone into captivity? Who's being exploited? Who's being preyed upon? Look worldwide. Who is this happening to? Name one white nation of people who these things are happening to. Praise Yah. On a worldwide scale now. I'm not talking about just on a local scale. On a worldwide scale. Where you go to both uh, sides, uh, uh, you know, bo both major regions of the world. I don't want to say both hemispheres because we don't live on a sphere. But both major regions of the world. The western region. The eastern region. And look who's being exploited. Look who's being preyed upon. Look who's been taken into captivity. Look who has adversaries all around. The answer is clear. Praise Yahuwah. Now, verse 18. Thus said Yahuwah, See, I turn back the captivity of Yaakov's tents and have compassion on his dwelling places, and the city shall be built on its own mound, and the palace stand on its right place. And out of them shall arise thanksgiving in the voice of those who are laughing. And I shall increase them and they shall not diminish. And I shall esteem them and they shall not be small. And his children shall be as before and his congregation shall be established before me. And I shall punish all who oppress them. And his prince shall be from him and his ruler shall come from among him. And I shall bring him near and he shall approach me. For who is this who pledged his heart to approach me, declares Yahuwah. And you shall be my people, and I shall be your Elohim. See, the storm of Yahuwah shall go forth in a rage, a whirling storm. It bursts upon the head of the wicked. The burning displeasure of Yahuwah shall not turn back until he has done and established the purposes of his heart. In the latter days you shall understand it. Praise Yah. So, Yahuwah has his way in the whirlwind. Yeah, we've been hearing about whirlwinds lately, tornadoes, hurricanes. Yah has his way in those things. And if he wants to take you in it, he'll take you. If he wants you to be preserved, he'll preserve you. That's all in the hands of Yah. This is not something that is outside of the control of Yah, but he's in total control of the elements. So, brothers and sisters, redemption is coming. We need to be encouraged in that. National redemption. Praise Yahuwah. He's going to redeem us as a nation of people. But we've got to be Kodesh. And we've got to be righteous. That's why, that's why we call ourselves Kodesh Nation, brothers and sisters. And this is why we deal with matters of Kodeshah. Because we realize that without Kodeshah, we will not see Yahuwah. This is no game. This is not something to play around with. There's going to be a broad road and there's going to be a narrow road. There's going to be wheat and there are going to be tares. There's going to be bad fish and there's going to be good fish. Praise Yahuwah. And few are going to end up being saved. That's why we've got to strive to enter in at the straight gate. Many will seek to, in, seek to enter in and they shall not be able. Praise Yahuwah. So we've got to be Kodesh even as he is Kodesh. We've got to deny ourselves. Take up our stake daily. Follow the master, Yah Yah Yahusha. Praise Yahuwah. And hate our lives in this world that we may keep it unto life eternal. Praise Yahuwah. So that concludes the study of the Nevi'im, the prophets, Yirmiyahu chapters 26 through 30. And with that, I will say, Shalom.